Welcome to the Therapy Show Podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Mustard. In each episode, I interview a seasoned and knowledgeable talk therapist from the counseling world to glean valuable insights, techniques, and tools that you can apply to your practice and your life. And if you're considering a career in the counseling field or just want to hear about what it's like to be a talk therapist, then this is the podcast for you. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Therapy Show. I know it has been a while (laughs) since I put an episode out and I don't really have excuse except man, life has just kicked me hard the past couple of weeks in a good way. Not, not in a bad way. Just have a lot of things going on and podcasts. I've had all these episodes, you know, my editor, Laura, who's amazing. She has gone through and edited the interviews. I just haven't had a chance to write and create the intro. So moving forward, I need a better system. If you're a podcaster out there, and you're one of those people that is able to record your intro right before you jump into the interview, I'm going to start <laughs> doing that because I'm realizing that that's part of my issue. It's part of my system breakdown with podcasting is I don't record the intro when I am going into the interview. So that is all changing with the next interviews that I record. But this interview is a little bit different. I'm talking with Dr. Steve Thayer. He is a psychologist out in Utah. And I don't really have... You know, usually with a podcast, I will share three things that I'm dying to learn or want to kind of pick the the uh, guest point of view on, like some type of education or value that I can offer. And with this interview, I just kind of went into it with, I just want to talk to Steve and have a conversation with him because we connected a couple of weeks back, a couple of months back now, maybe uh, on a phone call and we just got to know each other. And I thought, you know, you're just a cool dude. <laughs> I want to have you on the show. I don't quite know where we're going to go, what we're going to talk about, but Uh, let's just do an interview and have a conversation. So really this episode is just a conversation with a guy that I think is a neat person and we have similar interests. He's going to talk to you about psychedelics and what he's doing with a company called Nova Mind. He's going to talk about his background, being in the military and being a psychologist there, um, why he got out of it. Hint, hint, compassion fatigue, which I know is something that a lot of us are experiencing these days. And I want to do an episode on compassion fatigue and burnout because uh, I know it's a general, well, not general, it's a theme out there right now. And and I have some ways that I work on it. And Steve talks about how he handled it or handles it and, and what he did. And I find it pretty interesting. He just, I don't want to ruin it for you guys. So go ahead and listen to the episode. If you want to connect with Steve, he is on Instagram. Um, you can also follow Nova Mind as well. He has a podcast. I'll put all of that in the show notes. But I just, think this is a really cool interview and yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. So, Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the therapy show. I'm your host, Lisa Mustard. And this week's guest is Dr. Steven Thayer. Welcome to the show, Steve. It's so awesome to have you. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. So you and I initially connected a couple of weeks back on Instagram and we just mm-hmm. kind of started having a conversation. I learned that you were kind of into psychedelics, which I'm learning more and more about. And I'm fascinated by the research, where it's going, how to be a psychedelic assisted psychotherapist. And so I just would love to learn more about who you are, what you do, how you got here. And I don't know, we'll just, just have a conversation. So welcome. How's it going? Yeah, Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's going real good. Yeah. Real yeah. good. Yeah. I, I heard you on an episode of selling the couch That's with right. Melvin and That's I can't right. pronounce his last name, but I've enjoyed his podcast a lot and just trying to figure out where I'm taking my career as a, as a therapist. But so yeah, we connected on Instagram. I'm a clinical psychologist. I started my career in the United States air force. I was a air force psychologist for about four years, decided that I know a a long-term career in the military wasn't for me. So I got out and joined a, a private practice, small group practice, which was a pleasant change from the giant bloated bureaucracy that was the Department of Defense um, to something, you know, lean and nimble, like a small group practice. Got to see a lot of clients do a lot of therapy. Long story short, I got kind of burned out. You know, I was, I got to the point where I was seeing probably 40 therapy clients a week, you know, 45 minute sessions back to back and just my soul melted. So I found a way to scale back And ended up developing an interest in this psychedelic assisted therapy space several years ago, started reading all the research. It really appealed to me that we would have a medicine 
that could enhance psychotherapy, not a medicine that you would, you know, take daily to sort of just uh, manage your emotions or in, I guess, the most skeptical of cases, hide from your emotions, right? Yeah, right. And up until then, I had, you know, all I really knew about psychedelics is that they were party drugs of the 60s and led to the war on drugs and, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, that they would make your mind melt and you'd peel your skin off and do crazy things. Turns out none of that stuff's really true. And back in the 50s and 60s, they were actually being researched as powerful therapeutic agents. Mm-hmm. And they did leak into the counterculture. And that's why we had the war on drugs and why they were all scheduled as schedule one substances, meaning illegal and of no therapeutic use. So we are experiencing a psychedelic renaissance right now, last mm-hmm. decade or so, where these drugs are finally being researched again. Those that have been using them therapeutically and recreationally in the underground world are coming forward. And uh, it's a really exciting time, yeah. I think. It is. It is. And I, I just love your story. I think it's really cool how you got to where you are. And it sounds like you had to take, well, you, you said you hit burnout, like you hit you hit burnout yeah. with the private practice. And I can relate, I can relate on a lot of levels. Can I just ask like, what did you do to kind of relieve your burnout or to figure things out moving forward? Yeah, that's a good question. I was trying to do everything, but change my career. You know, I was, I was trying to do all the, the self-care stuff in the world. Mm-hmm. For me, physical fitness is really important. Having adventures with friends. So I'd go mountaineering. I'd go hunting. I would do all these, this intense physical outdoor stuff with my buddies, which was nice, but nothing could really heal what was, what I was sort of doing to myself as a therapist, just seeing client after client after client. And one of the barometers, like one of those things you really need to pay attention to, I think as a helping professional, that's a component of burnout is compassion fatigue. Yeah. And I was just, I was noticing I wasn't, my heart wasn't really in my work like it used to be. And so then I just started looking for opportunities to, to change what I was doing. Uh, I needed to make sure I was making enough money to support my family, got mm-hmm. three kids and a spouse. And, but I also didn't want to run from one bad thing to another bad thing. Yeah. So I was working to trust my gut on this and followed my interest in psychedelics into what eventually became a salaried position where the deal was I could see fewer clients and develop into what I, what I am now. So I'm the clinical director of education and training for a company called Nova Mind, which is a Canadian-based company that is working to bring psychedelic-assisted medicine to the forefront. So awesome. we've got several clinics now. And in my role, I get to keep doing therapy, mm-hmm. but only, a, only as much as I want to do. And the rest of my time, I am creating education products, both to be used internally for Novamine, but also soon for the external market around ketamine-assisted psychotherapy, but soon other other medicines. So cool. that's my okay. long answer. I like it. I like your long answer. I totally <laughs> get it. No, I totally can understand changing everything outside of your career. Like I've done that. I just, if I just change this over here and, you know, it works for a little bit and then it's, I totally get the compassion fatigue and, um, Oh yeah, we could probably do a whole episode on compassion fatigue, but, um, and as you heard my big sigh, (laughs) (laughs) all right. So let, can we just talk a little bit about what you do at Novamind? Because I'm fascinated by this. So you pay, you see patients there Mm -hmm. and are you doing psychedelic assisted psychotherapy there? I am. Yeah. Okay. So we're using ketamine, which is currently in the United States, the only legal quote unquote psychedelic. And I put the quotes around it because it's not a classic psychedelic. It's a, it's an anesthetic. It's a dissociative anesthetic that has been used for decades for that purpose for Mm -hmm. in higher doses to put people under for surgery and in, in lower doses, just to kind of calm them down. Like if you're a little kid and you go into the emergency room and you need stitches, they might give you a little bit of ketamine to calm you down. Gotcha. But we've discovered that in, at certain dosage ranges, it produces a dreamlike out-of-body psychedelic experience, which we can really make use of in the therapy room. So there's, there's all the neurological reasons why it's a rapid antidepressant. Mm-hmm. You know, it's an M- NMDA receptor antagonist. It leads to, to synaptogenesis and neurogenesis and neuroplasticity, all these like neurochemical reasons why we're excited about it. But from a therapist perspective, I like it because it's almost like live dream interpretation. Sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, this person is is going through this altered state of consciousness that gives them more ready access to what's behind their ego defenses. And it yeah. allows them to approach emotions in a way that beforehand have been very difficult because it kind of quiets the amygdala mm-hmm. a little bit. 
so yeah, I'm doing some of that and we can talk about like different ways that I do ketamine assisted therapy if you're interested. But, uh, we also, as part of Nova mind have a part of our company that's a contract research organization. So we do clinical trials mm -hmm. and we are looking at probably getting our first psilocybin clinical trial, which is the active ingredient in magic mushrooms here, probably maybe before the end of the year, but certainly, certainly next year, man. Oh, I'm so excited. I want it's to come cool. out to Utah because you're doing it in Utah, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Novamine is based in, in Toronto, but we started what was called Cedar Psychiatry here in Utah and then Novamine acquired us. So we're kind of home base is in Utah, but we're expanding across the country. Okay. Well, let me know when y'all come to South Carolina because yeah. I'm so interested. <laughs> so interested. And I just want to run this by you. So it's really interesting to me. I kind of feel like I'm in this silo here where I live with my therapy peers when we get together and, you know, I kind of bring up psychedelics. I feel like they look at me a little weird. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that. I think I, I almost feel like I'm like we're ahead of the future of mental health. And um, as I talk to other therapists, sometimes I feel like they're, they're not into it yet. Like they're not, they're not there yet. And so do you find like, it's like a certain type of therapist that is drawn to this work or, you know, who gets excited by this? I mean, do you, do you see any, anything different about the people that are the therapists out there that get excited? Maybe it's what I'm asking. Yeah. You know, I, I try to have compassion for those people who give me sort of a side eye when mm -hmm. I say that I'm into psychedelic assisted therapy, because, mm -hmm. you know, the past few decades uh, and the, and what I've been referring to as the war on drugs has done a good job to sort of propagandize us into mm -hmm. thinking that these medicines are terrible. You know, when I, when I was a kid, it was the dare program yeah. you know, say no to drugs. Right. And certainly there are reasons to say no to drugs kids, but <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so it's interesting. The therapists who grew up in the sixties, mm -hmm. I find are like all about this. Yeah. And then you have the really younger ones that are just sort of coming out of grad school who are all for something new. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of grad school graduates, recent graduates, unfortunately graduate already feeling kind of jaded yeah. about what we can do from a mental health perspective. I also find that therapists who are more, so they're trained more in sort of experiential approaches as opposed to structured cognitive behavioral approaches seem to be more down yeah. for the psychedelic stuff because it's more intuitive. It's more, at least the work that we do with psychedelics is more intuitive. It's more experiential. It's more body focused. So a lot of the therapies that we pair with medicines like ketamine and psilocybin are therapies like somatic experiencing or internal family systems or emotion focused therapy. Gotcha. And they are doing, you know, some studies with cognitive behavioral therapy and psychedelics as well. So I'm not trying to crap on all the CBTers. Right. I, I was... I was quite the CBT or myself, but yeah. And I just, you know, I'm not either. I, I'm just curious, like what, what your experience has been. And that's kind of been a little bit to my experience as being a therapist. Cause I work for a military branch here in South Carolina. And I think the reason I got so excited about it was I've been with them almost 10 years. And I, I see the same service members, the same veterans kind of stuck, you know, we can right. give them, I can like say, Hey, go, okay, well, let's try this now, or let's try that. And it just seems like they're just so stuck. It's almost like they can't, they can't get to a place of where they want to be. They, they just feel so defeated. So when I read about the psilocybin and the MDMA, I get so excited because I feel like, gosh, this could just, you know, fast track you to, you know, having the life that you want, Right. you know, no offense to those treatments that are amazing, like EMDR and, the CBTs and the cognitive reprocessing and all that. It's just like, wow, there's something out there now that could have them healed or in remission yeah. so much faster. And right. who doesn't want their patients to get well faster? And I think that's why I'm so excited about it is, you know, I see people getting better and they, you know, it's not, it's not like a magic cure-all. I mean, it's definitely you want to be doing this with a therapist and you want to be doing it the correct way. You don't want to just be doing it on the street. Please don't go do it on the street yeah. <laughs> with somebody who says they can, yeah, man, I'll be your guide. You know, you want to be doing this in a safe environment. Probably should jump in at this point and say that, you know, we're just having a conversation. We're not recommending treatment. We're not saying like, you know, don't listen to your therapist and your psychiatrist. Like that's not what we're saying. We're just, we don't want you to, to leave what you're doing. But have, if you feel like, you know, maybe there's an alternative for you, 
approach it. Talk about it with your psychiatrist or your therapist. It's just conversation. Not We're not suggesting stop doing what you're doing, but have that conversation. Right. So I feel like I need to put that little disclaimer out there. Yeah. Yeah. There's certainly no such thing as a panacea, as a cure-all in mental right. health. But you mentioned stuckness. And I experienced the same thing when I was mm-hmm. treating active duty folks in the Air Force. And so just for some context, for those people who don't know, you mentioned MDMA, mm-hmm. which is... It's a, it's a stimulant. It's unlike some of the other psychedelics in that it doesn't cause a lot of the visual distortions and a lot, like the weird dreamlike trippy experience. But the studies that are being done now mm-hmm. on MDMA for PTSD, and this is for, they're calling it, you know, severe PTSD or treatment resistant PTSD. Right. These are people who've had a lot of treatment and they're still, their symptoms are very severe. This is being done by an organization called MAPS, the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies. They're in phase three clinical trials and they're combining MDMA with a rigorous therapy protocol. And what they're finding is up to a year after the protocol is complete, 60% of their, no, no, close to 70% actually Mm -hmm. of their participants no longer met diagnostic criteria for PTSD, you know, using the gold standard measure for PTSD. Mm -hmm. That is insane. We don't have that anywhere else that I know of for severe treatment resistant mental illness. It is essentially as close you get to as a, as close as you can get to a cure for a mental illness that we know of. Yeah. So, I mean, you talk about stuckness. This is one of the reasons I'm so excited about this yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I mean, really, I feel like I just want to like run out to all my therapy friends be like, Oh my gosh. And they just look at me like, what are you talking <laughs> Lisa? So I just get, you yeah. know, I feel like, I, I don't know. I feel like part of my my role right now is, is to talk about it and to share the information. I'm not quite sure. Like I say, Oh, I'd love to get certified and trained in it, but kind of like you, I'm not sure I want to get back into that much doing the treatment. I just think I'm kind of at a point in my career where I'm like, I want to be an advocate for it. I want to show people what this is all about and help bring people to it or bring it to them. But my husband asked me, well, would you want to go get trained in it? And I thought, you know, if I was 10 years younger and I didn't have what I, you know, if I wasn't where I was in life and the compassion fatigue, maybe hadn't, cause I know myself and I know what I'm capable of now at this point in my life and, and, you know, what I want my skills to where I want them to go. But, right, you know, so I don't know, like I sit on that, that fence of, well, do I go and get the training? Do I become a psychedelic assisted psychotherapist? Like just go and get it. Cause I'm so curious about how it all works. So, yeah, I know. So Nova mind will be eventually creating a program for people to, for therapists to become psychedelic assisted therapists? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so some those programs uh, exist sort of, I guess you could call it informally right now because the medicine hasn't been FDA approved. So we don't know right. what the requirements are going to be. So MAPS is, they're putting together training mm-hmm. cohorts every four months or so where they're training people in their methodology that will likely be the one you want to get if right. you want to work with MDMA specifically. But like I'm working with Novamind on creating certification training for ketamine assisted therapy, which you can find a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but I mean, it sounds like to me, it would be a detour from where your current trajectory is. So maintain your curiosity, you know, stay close to the research, stay close to the news. And if any of your therapist friends sort of uh, react oddly to your interest, just point them to the research. That's what's cool now is there's so much research being done by super legit organizations, right. Johns Hopkins. In fact, Johns Hopkins just opened a, they call it the Center for Psychedelic and Consciousness Research, mm-hmm. Imperial College at London. There's super legit research organizations doing yeah. the work. Yeah. 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 And I think, and I think that's what, what I like having that to fall on, like, oh yeah, just go to MD, go look to, go look at maps, go look at Johns Hopkins, go look at all, you know, all these places that are churning out research. So mm-hmm. that's the beauty of it right now where we sit and we can just share and just, I guess not how I try not to have expectations that people will be as amazed by it as me. And also I have to remember that a lot of my friends and peers have years and years and a lot of money invested in what they've already done, you know, the EMDR, the EFT. So I think that there's a little bit of that too, you know? So, and I think there's places for everybody at the table. We have this huge table. We have, you know, we're not, mental health isn't going anywhere. In fact, (laughs) in my world of working with the military, it's kind of, um, we're getting, you know, pulled in a good bit right now. We're, we're seeing yeah. a lot of folks who are re-traumatized being re-traumatized, or it's bringing up a lot of stuff that they hadn't worked through. Families right. are having a hard time. You know, I work with a lot of people who've lost loved ones because of the past 20 years. So 
it's really a, a interesting time right now in the with the military but i digress i digress <laughs> Hey friend, want to be more comfortable while sitting on the therapy couch? I sure did and went looking for pants and tops that were soft, wrinkle resistant, and would match just about anything I already had in my closet. And now Zaya Active makes up about 80% of my wardrobe. Would you like to learn more? Head over to my site, lisamuster.com and click on the active wear tab. And don't think this is just for women. They have men's and kids clothes too. And our family is loving the quality and I am loving the price tag. So head over to my site to check it all out. Is there anything else you want? Well, tell us about your podcast. Like tell us what, what you cover on your podcast is really good. Yeah. So I have a podcast called Psychedelic Therapy Frontiers, where my uh, colleague, Dr. Reed Robison, psychiatrist and the chief medical officer at Nova Mind, and I have weekly conversations about psychedelic medicine. So mm-hmm. we talk about the different medicines. So we talk about updates on the research. We talk about it, it's kind of geared to therapists, guides, healers, just interested enthusiasts who mm-hmm. want to learn more about the topic of psychedelic assisted psychotherapy and psychedelic medicine. So yeah, you can, we're on YouTube at Nova Minds YouTube channel, and we're on all the podcast platforms, but I've, I've really enjoyed that podcast. Like I'm a podcast connoisseur. I listen to like hours of podcasts during my workouts, you know, during any, anytime I get a moment. So it's been really fun to actually have one of my own. Yeah. I love podcasting. It's just like, Oh, I can't love it. It's just, what have you most loved so far? Like what, what do you enjoy the most? I, I just love sharing stuff. You know, I, I have this sort of personal motto of pay wisdom forward. I, I've been given so much wisdom by super smart, <laughs> educated people. I feel like I've been given these gifts that aren't originally my own and I, and I want to share them with others. So when I learn something, the first thing I think of is, oh, I can't wait to share this with somebody. Yeah. And I, I really love having conversations with people like you, people who are enthusiastic and smart and creative and uh, try hard, but also people who are just normal, Mm -hmm. you know, Uh, authentic connection is really important to me. So I guess those are kind of the things I've enjoyed the most is being able to have conversations that are imperfect Mm -hmm. and share them with the world anyway, because I'm a recovering perfectionist. um, (laughs) And so having something that I could just put out there and uh, hopefully it helps um, has been really, I guess it's been kind of therapeutic for me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can. Oh, it totally is therapeutic for me. Like I do, I do half of this just for me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, of course, with wanting to pay it forward and, and talk to cool people and interesting people and, you know, get what they're doing out there into the world. So I got it. Okay. Well, what podcast do you, and you said you're a podcast. Yeah. I love what podcasts. do you say? You're an expert connoisseur. You're a connoisseur. So what are your yeah. favorite podcasts? So it shifts um, with kind of what I'm what I'm learning about in the moment. But right mm-hmm. now, I'm really geeking out on the Huberman Lab, Andrew mm-hmm. Huberman's podcast. I think he's a Stanford neuroscientist. Yeah, just re- it, they're like Ivy League lectures for free. And I know, it's really, oh my really actionable yes. information. I've been a Tim Ferriss show fan for a long time. I mm-hmm. kind of fall in and out of love with his show. <laughs> I'll sometimes yeah. stop listening to it for a while. I'm not ashamed to admit I'm a Joe Rogan bro. Like I love listening to his show. Sometimes he gets a little tedious, of course, but he's the pod father. Um, I've really enjoyed some of the psychotherapy specific podcasts. Like I mentioned, Selling the Couch. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of the other ones I listen to. Practice of the Practice, I think is another one. Mm-hmm. There's some psychedelic ones, Psychedelic Today uh, that I really like. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, I could go on and on. Rebel Wisdom is a good one. I mean, I could fire up my podcast app. I've got over a hundred podcasts that I'm subscribed to, which is kind of ridiculous, okay. but I'm just writing these down. Cause I haven't heard of some of these psychedelic today, rebel will wisdom Lex Friedman podcast. Okay. I find that really interesting. Mm-hmm. Sam Harris's podcast, making sense mm-hmm. is a good one. He's politically controversial. So brace yourself, but he's also a very wise meditation teacher. And I use his meditation app waking up. Oh my gosh. My I own. feel like I'm talking to my husband. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is so weird. I mean, I'm just every podcast you've mentioned, either I listen to it or he listens to it. I love the app. Do you know Richard Lang? Do you listen to yeah. Richard Lang? I interviewed Richard. Really? And did you listen to the um the William B. Irvin on Stoicism? Mm-mm. Oh, I interviewed him too. I mean, I found them because of waking up. 
Yeah. And I fell in love with the headless way and Richard's just a great guy. You guys, I don't know if you would, if y'all are interested in having him on your show, I mean, he doesn't do the psychedelic stuff, but his headless way is sure is. I mean, I think make you, you know, it's like that. I get it. You know, Uh, I'd be super interested because right now I'm going through the introduction to the Koan way, Henry Schultman. Oh, Um, that's like Zen, Mm -hmm. Zen meditation, mindfulness stuff way into that. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I should just do a, a podcast on podcasts. I listen to so many freaking yeah. podcasts. Yeah. As far as like business stuff, the smart passive income, yeah. Pat Flynn's podcast. Like we are like. <laughs> Synchronicity from the same way. Like my brother from another mother. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't said that on the show yet. And I've been wanting to say it. So that worked. <laughs> Sweet. I love it. Yeah. Smart passive income. Oh, and, but by the way, Huberman today that came out today is about yeah. depression. And then he touches on psychedelics. It's pretty cool. It's great. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm on my walk listening to this going, dude, this is like continuing education worthy, you know, Oh, for sure. Like I, I just got so much wisdom and I mean, I got to listen again and again to like retain it all. But I mean, the one he did with, um, Anna Lemke, I think that's how you say mm-hmm. her name on addiction. I was, Oh, so good. Yeah, it's like it's like CEUs. I mean, oh, I've, graduate I've learned level more, stuff. Mm-hmm. I've learned more from his podcast than from almost any any like conference I've been to or seminar yeah. where I've gotten CEUs. Like, yeah. it, right. what he's doing is amazing. Yeah. So shout out to you, Doctor Huberman. We Huberman. We we're, we appreciate you. And then I do listen to Joe Rogan. I really, I'm gonna say it. I I know a lot of people don't like him, but I do. I like Joe Rogan. I like him. I think <laughs> I think his show. I mean, I don't listen to all of them, but, and I don't, I don't agree with everything he says, of course, but I mean, I think that's the beauty of it. Like, I love yeah. that he's not afraid to say what do you, what he's thinking and feeling and, you know, put it out there and have conversations with people that, you know, there's their conversations. It's, it's pretty cool stuff. I, yeah. I do like his I, show. I, I think we need more of that kind of thing. And by that kind of thing, I mean, we need more conversations that challenge us. Yeah. And if somebody says some things that you really love and they also think and say some things that make you uncomfortable. Great. If yeah. you can hold those, this, those two things together to me, that's emotional and, and cognitive maturity. Totally. And I think, you know, as a society, if I can get on a soapbox, like we're, we're putting ourselves in these silos of information and belief mm-hmm. and we're, we're building these fortified walls to protect ourselves from the other tribes. And it's like, we're going back in time. We are. We need to evolve. And I think one way to evolve is to be mindful of the defenses inside of ourselves that show up that want to murder the other tribes people Mm -hmm. and be a little bit more ecumenical and learn from our own triggers and then learn from opposing opinions. Yeah. And that doesn't mean we have to change our minds all the time, but change a changing mind is a mature mind. Yeah. I I really appreciate you saying that. And I like, I can, I'm nodding my head over here because yeah, I mean, I see it in everywhere and, but not just everywhere, but especially I see it a lot in our field. And I yeah. think that's what that's, that makes my stomach hurt, you know, cause I feel like as therapists, that's where we're supposed to be. We're, we're, we're not supposed to be so one-sided, you know, I just feel like that doesn't bode well for our profession as well as the people we hope to help. You know? Yeah. So I could go, I don't know. I don't know if we should even touch that. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're touching it. And I yeah. think, uh, <laughs> I think for a lot of people in our profession, when they get siloed the way I'm describing, it probably comes from a good place. I mean, it comes from fear, but it also comes from a desire to protect those who have a hard time protecting themselves. It's true. Yes. You know, most of us got into this profession to help mm-hmm. and to help people who are struggling. And so, you know, the uh, the cancel culture and the hate speech and things around those topics, I have a ton of compassion for, and I want to understand better. And I, and I want to help people. I just don't want us to throw babies out with bathwater and, and I don't want the pendulum to swing too far to right. an un, unhealthy end of right. the spectrum. Right. And we don't want to enable people, you know, yeah, I think there's a lot, ourselves. there's a lot of that going on, it's enabling people and, you know, instead of enabling challenge and it's okay, it's okay to be, to feel something different. It's okay to, I mean, that happens to me all the time, you know, maybe as I've been around and do this work. I mean, I think that's just a sign of like maturity. And like you said, like being mature in this field and, you know, being able to see both, both and, or or you can have both. And yeah, I don't think I could say that about myself, you know, 15 years ago and I'm not perfect. I don't, every situation is like that, but 
And I think that for me, the litmus test is I'm not so triggered when I see something that used to make me go, Oh, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I think that's just, Oh, you know, this, the, it is what it is. That's, that's what it is. And I don't know. I don't know. I I guess I just don't have words for it. Maybe, maybe it's hard to express. It's hard to articulate. You know, my, my co-host, my podcast co-host, Dr. Robinson, he likes to say that triggers are friends to follow Mm. or that triggers can be pathways to understanding. So good. Yeah. So when we're triggered, we can, we can choose to throw up the walls of defense or, you know, pull out the weapons of attack. And sometimes we need to do that to maintain our boundaries and protect ourselves. But if we're mindful and we're still, and we're compassionate and we're aware, then sometimes we can learn a lot about ourselves by our triggers. And I say all this also being a, uh, a work in progress. Like I'm, I'm a shit show as much as anybody else. Oh yeah. So we're all just like Ram Dass says, we're all walking each other home. Let's yeah. That's true. Yeah. I'm, I'm a show too. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Y'all. <laughs> I think what, I think what I love about this conversation is I hope it just shows that we're open-minded you and I, and we have a lot of curiosity about people. We care about people. We, we love the field of mental health. We're excited about, you know, what's coming and how it's going to heal people. And I think that's, that's what we're about. I mean, well, I don't yeah. want to plump you in that, but that's kind of like the vibe I get um, mm-hmm. when I initially connected with you and we, we talked a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, thanks for, thanks for holding the space and having this conversation. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, totally. Do you want to shift a little bit and talk some more about where you're going personally yeah. as you kind of like grow your presence on the social media podcast world? Yeah. Share with yeah. everybody what's going on. Thank you. Sure. So yeah, you know, as, as I've sort of explored how I want to show up for the world and live a meaningful life, I've decided I, w- I want to help in a lot of different ways and it involves paying that paying wisdom forward. Like I was saying before, uh, I love what I'm doing for what I consider my day job. You know, the psychedelic assisted therapy, the work I do with Nova mind is awesome. I, I, I'm so grateful that, that this is where I am right now, but I feel like I have more interests and more to give. You know, I have a lot of interests in whole, whole mind, body, spirit, wellness, and I've learned a lot in my own efforts to cultivate my own mind, body, and spirit wellness. So I'm trying to figure out ways that I can package that and deliver it to the world mm-hmm. that would feel really exciting and authentic to me. Cause if it's not, it, I won't sustain it. I'm sure that's just going to involve a lot of work. And then from a a practical side, also hopefully be a source of revenue for Mm -hmm. me. And so, you know, I've, like I said, I've followed people like Pat Flynn forever. I'm, I'm kind of a a thinker and not a doer. You know, some people are ready, fire, aim, and I'm ready, (laughs) aim, 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 aim. Ah, never mind. (laughs) (laughs) Put the gun back in the holster. So the podcast that, that I started with Reed was a credit to him, you know, he was kind of the driving force, but I'm so happy that we're doing it. So mm-hmm. right now what I've been doing is just trying to share on my Instagram page. Cause it's the app I can stomach the most, you know, <laughs> most of the social media just makes me want to throw up in my mouth. So yeah, I deleted Facebook from my phone. Like I finally did it. I finally yeah, did you. it. It is so freeing. I love it. I do have Instagram cause I do love Instagram. I mean, I get it. It's the one I can stomach too. And I feel like the videos and just the dogs and people. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love it, but go ahead. Sorry. I didn't, that was a side. Sorry. Well, I got on TikTok. I got on TikTok for a while and, and I, Ugh. you know, I, I came up from like a two hour TikTok Can't do it. binge hey, in a haze. And I was like, oh my gosh, they've hacked the human nervous system. Like how, how did I spend that much time on this stupid app yeah. looking at people dancing? I mean, some of the content on TikTok is awesome. I'll give them that. Some of the creators on there have really put out cool stuff, but yeah, I don't want to necessarily be on an app that like I said, is, is more addictive than cocaine. So (laughs) yeah. So I'm trying to share authentically. My, my problem is I have this wide interest in what I, what I said was, uh, you know, mind, body, spirit, wellness. And all I hear from these sort of business gurus is that you need a niche, Mm -hmm. you know, that being said, you know, there are some people out there who do sort of broad spectrum wellness stuff and they put out good, helpful content and Mm -hmm it's on many, many different topics. So that's kind of where I am now. Yeah. So you're still kind of unsure what that's going to be, what that product is going to be. Yeah. I want it, I want it to grow 
I've spent too much time trying to plan it from the ground up like an architect. Like, mm-hmm. okay, this is what I'm going to offer. I'm going to I'm going to do an e-course, I'm going to do an ebook, I'm going to do, you know, a podcast. I spent too much time spinning my wheels in the mud and so I've decided to try an approach that's a little bit different for me and that's just to let it grow organically out of just doing stuff. So yeah. just sharing stuff on Instagram. I'm I might start an, another podcast that's just my own. Yeah. And hopefully once I find the things that like, I'm trying to find my voice by speaking, I guess Mm -hmm. is one way of saying it. Right. Yeah. I like the idea of, uh, well, let me just back up and say, I agree with you. I like the idea of letting it grow organically and not so much having, I want it to be a course. Now what's my course going to be about? Because then all you're doing, you're just stressing yourself out, trying to figure out like, what is this course going to be? And for some people, courses are great. They already know in their head, like I'm going to do a course. Like I have a friend, his expertise is anger management. And he realized that he could have a passive income stream if he created an online course instead of having to see more people in private practice. Right. So for him, that was just like easy peasy. That's his thing. Then there are other people who kind of like me, I mean, really that's, I just wasn't sure what I wanted to put out there, but I knew I wanted to try podcasting Mm -hmm. because it just feels good. I like talking to people. I like connecting with people, I like reaching out and connecting and asking people to come on my show. And, and that was just a natural fit. So I, it's kind of grown organically. It's taken time, but I've enjoyed every minute of it, you know, and I would not enjoy putting together an online course that would be so hard for me. Right. You know? Um, and I've had people say, well, could you put together an online course on how to create continuing education? And I'm like, no, (laughs) I don't know. I don't, I could do a pod course on how to do it, but I don't really want to do an online course. I just, I don't want to, that's just me because podcasting is what I enjoy. And I hear that with you too. It's what you enjoy doing. And I think it would be really cool if you started your own podcast, had your, you know, maybe have an outline of the things that you want to talk about that you want to share with people, but at the same time, then bring people on that you have similar interests, you, you know, share similar interests with, and then you have a conversation around what those things are like that would be really neat. You know, I mean, I'd be listening and then down the road, as you kind of let it happen organically, something will present itself to you that you go, Oh, well, there we go. That's it. That's what people want from me. And it could be, they want a mastermind with you. They could be, they want, you know, it could be, they want um, more information and you create like a Patreon account. And I'm just using Patreon as an example where you, you know, you share more information and we pay to be a part of that. Those, those conversations, I mean, there's so many things you could do. It doesn't have to be an online course. I know everybody thinks the online course is like the way to generate passive income. I mean, maybe for some people, but there's lots of us out there that it just makes me want to like hide in the closet and I don't, I don't yeah. want to do it. Yeah. My, my, my hunch is that the online courses that make the most money are the ones that teach you how to make online courses. Like definitely. <laughs> It's like the, you know, the, the I'm going to teach you to be a millionaire. And the way I became a millionaire is by teaching people to become millionaires. Right. It's <laughs> sort of meta, but that's good. That's good advice though. You know, as I'm hearing you talk, I'm thinking just, you know, follow my curiosities yeah. and that's kind of what I've done my whole life anyway. Right. And then as long as I'm doing that in an authentic way, then the opportunities that show up should be interesting and should all be aligned. There you go. Yeah. See, you are my brother from another mother. That's really what I, what I've been saying for so long is it will, it will happen. It will present itself. You just have to put yourself out there. And I think that's the scariest part for most of us is putting ourselves out there, starting something new. Who's going to listen. Am I going to sound silly? Am I going to say, um, and like, and well, I have, I worry about that too, all the time, but getting, just pushing yourself through it and doing it. And it builds your confidence and you go, okay, I've done two episodes. Okay. Now I've done five. Now I've done 10. People will show up for you. The ones that need to hear what you have to say, they will be there. Yeah. I mean, it, it will happen. And then you just never know what can present itself. I mean, that's yeah. the cool part. I've, I've had the experience now where I've put something out that was definitely imperfect, you know, filled with ums and likes and mistakes. And, and then I'll get feedback, you know, from a person who liked it who yeah. genuinely authentically liked it. And my, my initial reaction is like, really? Yeah, I know. You liked that? All right. I guess the bar is lower than I thought. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I just need to just share stuff. Yeah. And look, I'm the same way. You mentioned earlier the ketamine episode and I was like, oh, 
okay, that's right. Oh, and I'm like, and I'm thinking to myself, I need to go listen to it to make sure that I approve of it. So he can give me that compliment. What, (laughs) what, you know? So, you know, and there are going to be people out there who listened to it and thought it was horrible, but that's fine. Like that's okay. You know, It, it really is. I think, and, and people aren't paying attention to us as much as we think that they are. I mean, right. you know, and well, well, making space, like you said, some people are going to think it's terrible making space for the people who aren't going to like your stuff for, mm-hmm. for, like I said, a recovering perfectionism perfectionist has right. been really important for me. Mm-hmm. And, and to know like Kevin, Ke- Tim Ferriss mentions this, that Kevin Kelly's 1000 true fans that yeah. you don't need everyone to like you. Right. You just need to find the people who really, really will like you and, and you need to offer them your soul. Like you need to offer them your heart. You need to serve them. Then you'll feel fulfilled and you'll really be helping the people that want to be helped by you. Yeah, exactly. That's so good. We'll put that in the show notes. Cause that's a really good essay. Um, I remember reading that too. Yeah. We had lots to add to the show notes. Cause this has been just a great, really cool conversation. Is there anything else you want to kick around? I mean. Well, I mentioned Instagram, like you can mm-hmm. find me on Instagram okay, at cool. Dr. Steve Thayer. I have a blog that's out there in the world. It's Dr. Stephen Thayer. I'm sort of moving away from Stephen to Steve because uh, the only people that call me Stephen are like my mom and my <laughs> wife when she's mad at me. And so I'm working on a new new website that's going to be a landing page for this forthcoming content. But uh, yeah, just connect with me on Instagram. If any of you listeners have a podcast and you think uh, it would be relevant to have a conversation with me, I'm, I'm trying to make the rounds. I just really love having conversations like this. Yeah, definitely. I know I gave you some folks to connect with. I hope that you are able to get yourself on those shows as well. So That'd yeah, be awesome. there are a lot of, a lot of folks who listen, who um, listen to the same podcast we do. So they listen to selling the couch practice of the practice practice of therapy, grow group practice, faith and practice, blah, 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 all the practice stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I think it's really, I love those shows and we're also supportive of each other. And, um, it's just been, it's like a nice little family. I hope one day we can all kind of maybe have our own little podcast convention where all the mental health people get together and we collaborate and share. And that would be so amazing. So Steve, not Steven, yeah. <laughs> it's, been, it's been great having you on the show and we will link to your Instagram page in the show notes and we'll share Nova Mind as well. If people want to learn more about Nova Mind and yeah, you guys, thanks so much for being here and being a part of our, our conversation. This has just been awesome. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, that wraps up another episode of The Therapy Show with Lisa Mustard. I know there are hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there, and I'm thankful you've chosen to listen to mine. Be sure to visit lisamustard.com to access the show notes and discover more fantastic content. And I'd be grateful if you subscribe to the show. Thank Thank you. you.